This video is part of my tutorial series on the Nikon P950 P1000. And in this video, we're gonna look at the scene modes in this camera. What exactly is a scene? When do you use them? Are they gimmicky? Are they useful? We're gonna check that out right now. So the first mode on the menu is portrait, and we all know what that is. And let's see how this works. When the camera detects the subject, it'll put a yellow box around the face. Now, when you half press the shutter button, that box will go green, means it's locked in focus. When it takes the picture, it processes the image for a second to maximize the quality. So the portrait mode applies skin softening. Here is the picture without portrait mode, just regular mode, and here it is in portrait mode. So it's a personal choice. Now the next mode is for scenery, not people, called landscape mode. Here is a landscape type scene taken without the mode on, and here it is with the mode on. And what you can see it does, it sort of accentuates the colors, especially the reds, making the image more vibrant. Here it looks a little flatter with the mode not engaged. So the next mode in the scene menu is called sports. And you can see that the little runner indicates you're in sports mode. That means you're in high speed burst mode where it takes a burst of pictures to capture the action. So this offers like a shortcut because in order to get into high speed shooting, you'd have to go into the menu and hit continuous. So the sports mode does it for you. But if you're doing sports in a more serious way, you may wanna go into shutter priority mode and set yourself a fast shutter speed. The next mode is a very specific one called Night Portrait. If you don't have your flash raised, the camera will prompt you to do so, as it assumes you're in a low light environment. You will see that box again, it turns green, and it once again applies skin softening as it does in portrait mode, and here you can compare the two. Unfortunately, you can't control the degree of softening, you're sort of stuck with it. Now there is a way around this, don't use portrait mode, and you can apply skin softening afterwards in the playback menu, and you can either have it on high or low. This way you can decide, or if you don't like it, you don't have to apply it. So it may be better. Your skin is so beautiful. Now there's no skin softening for our non-human friends in pet portrait mode. When it finds the pet, it'll put the box around it, take three quick pictures in succession. The flash is disabled, and the shutter sound is disabled so as to not startle the animal, and you can see the results. For the party indoor mode, I tried to duplicate this graphic as best I can. If you don't have the flash engaged, the camera will try to find the slow shutter speed to get as much light in as possible. Fortunately, the Nikon has a good stabilization because it's in focus even with a slow shutter speed. Switching from people to scenery again, this is beach mode. Let me show you a comparison first with beach mode off and here with beach mode on. Wow, it's pretty dramatic, isn't it? You may have to blink to see this. There's hardly any difference. This scene is better when you have a subject because the light affects the metering of the scene. The bright water and the sand tends to underexpose someone's face. So in beach mode, even if you have the flash set to auto, it will fire to compensate for this. And as a reminder, in order to use the flash with this camera, it must be manually raised or else it will not go off. And it should definitely be raised in the snow scene, especially if you have people in the scene because the bright light from the snow is going to fool the metering of the camera. In this mode, if you have the flash raised, it will fire the flash to compensate for the exposure produced by the snow. So it's very similar to the beach scene, but the snow scene tends to shift the hue a little more towards the red. If you're getting something out of this video, please hit that like button and do subscribe because I have other videos in this tutorial series which go into this incredible zoom and the capabilities of the zoom and video modes and so much more. Right now, let's talk about sunset. It's beautiful to shoot sunsets. And this camera has a dedicated mode called, well, sunset mode. Now here's a city shot with the sunset mode off. Compare that to the mode on. Again, it's a small sensor camera and you can raise those deep shadows in post-production. That's one of the advantages. If you do shoot raw, you have more latitude to do that. Now we're still looking at sunset mode. It's off in this scene. And these modes obviously can be used in photos and video. Sunset mode is off. Here it's on. You can see there's a little more accent, a little more red, and it just looks more pleasing. Now the other side of the coin, we have the dusk dawn mode. So how does that do? Well, I actually got up early to do this and took this picture without that mode. 
and now with the mode, and this really is dramatic. However, I would say it's not always that accurate. Here, on another day, this is with it off, and this is with it on, and the scene was more accurate with it off. Now, the graphic for the night landscape mode shows a night city scene, and voila, I just happen to have one right in front of me. So there are two options. You have handheld and tripod. So first, let's try the tripod mode, and it gives a two-second exposure, processes the image, and the result is a cool trailing effect of the headlights, but nice sharp in the background. Now, let's try it in handheld mode. It'll still be on the tripod, but it should be okay. That's 1 15th of a second, so there won't be as much blurring of the headlights, but the scene still looks good, nice and sharp. Compare this to the shot taken without any mode engaged, and while it still looks good, I feel the night landscape mode exposes the picture better, just gives it a cooler look and uh, gives it a real good vibe. Now the close-up mode automatically puts the camera into a macro setting so you can shoot objects really close to the lens. I mean really close. If your camera was set to telephoto when you have the mode engaged, it'll zoom it back out so you're able to shoot up close. It's one of the cool features about this camera is the macro setting. It gives you the option of noise reduction burst or you can shoot a single shot. Now, when you're this uncomfortably close to your subject, you really can't use a flash because it'll create a shadow. That's pretty close. Yes, it is, and it's a great way to keep an eye on your subject. Now, if you're one of those people that love shooting their meals, well, this is the mode for you. Yeah. <laughs> Who's hungry? As soon as you switch into this food mode, you can see the saturation immediately changes, and it gets deeper. And you can also change the tint from red to more neutral, to blue. I don't know why you'd want to have blue food, but maybe green to accent the lettuce. Maybe something like this. But it's been clinically shown that shooting with a more saturated, warmer image has a subliminal effect on your audience. I am so hungry. What? Now, you may only use fireworks one day a year, and it's a really tough thing to shoot, especially with a small sensor camera. That dark sky, therefore, tends to overexpose the fireworks and blow them out. Fireworks mode forces the ISO down so it doesn't get too grainy. If you're taking a photo, it'll be a four second exposure to sort of maximize the colors. In this mode, the flash is set to off and the focus is set to infinity. The next mode called backlighting is very useful and you use this when the light is behind the subject creating a very dark image. If you don't have the flash on, set the HDR option to on. After taking the picture, the camera takes a couple of seconds to process it and take a look for yourself with the HDR on versus off. Big difference. I really like this mode. Many cameras have a panorama mode, but I found mixed results. Now, I'm trying the camera in a 360 panorama mode option. You have to be really careful and move the camera at a steady pace. If you're not steady, it's going to tell you, ah, you failed and you got to do it again. So it may take a few attempts to get it right, but when you're finished, it processes it for a second and a nice panorama shot. And you can actually zoom in on it later and you got a 360 view. It wasn't perfect. You see the little blank area on the right. There's also a non-360 mode, which is a little easier to use, but that also creates a very nice wide panoramic shot with little distortion if there's no movement. Pet portrait we discussed earlier. Selective color. That's good if you're into music videos. It's kind of a fun effect. And what it does is, is just that. It isolates a certain color, makes everything else black and white. So he since he's wearing a blue shirt, you choose blue from the slider, and then you take the picture, it processes it, and anything that is that color will only show up. Everything else is black and white. Now, multiple exposure lighten is designed for taking multiple shots in three particular situations, either capturing a trail of automobile headlights and tail lights at night, capturing star trails in the night sky, or capturing fireworks displays. You have to have the camera on a tripod, and you can see here, playing around with different shutter speed settings produces slightly different results every time. It's very cool, and it's a fun effect. Now, an effect you see all the time that's really popular and for good reason because it creates a really cool effect is that time-lapse effect. There are certain presets in the camera based on how long the camera needs to shoot images for. It's all automatic. It will stitch the final result in the camera together, and it produces it in 1080p resolution. It's really cool, very easy to use. Again, you need the camera mounted on a tripod. Check out my video on the video features of the camera for more details. 
And finally, while it's not exactly a scene mode, I want to talk to you briefly about the creative mode on the dial where you can dial in certain presets to make your images and videos uh, more jazzy and more interesting. And you can see by the names of denim and toy, it gives it a look that is like a filter you might find on social media. Try and be careful not to overuse these things because they will get tiresome after a while. But for the occasional use and to create a certain mood like morning or pop, I'm not sure why they call this Sunday, but they must have had a reason. Now, there is a misspelling, at least in my camera. Chacol? Well, I think they meant charcoal. Are you stupid or something? I appreciate you watching this video to the end, unless of course you just jump to the end, but let's assume you watched it to the end. If you like what you've seen, please give it a like and do subscribe. I have a lot more videos along the way. And be sure to check out my other tutorial videos on this camera. Thanks very much. See you in the next video.